hello everyone so let us today discuss in our ecmo class number 3 troubleshooting so we'll discuss today how to troubleshoot hypoxemia right so let us discuss so how to troubleshoot it so different guidelines has given different targets for oxygenation right so we will take our target of oxygenation is 88 to 90% or a po2 of 60 to 80 mm of hg so it is when this value were less than this this is called hypoxemia right when there is a development of hypoxemia in our patient how to stepwise approach so the number one thing that can produce hypoxemia is it is called circuit shunt and what do you mean by circuit shunt from this diagram you can see in the last class also we have discussed so the some amount of blood which is coming to the circuit ecmo circuit and some amount of blood is going away from ecmo circuit via the disease lung so some amount of blood is being shunted out of the ecmo circuit that is called the circuit shunt so the more the circuit shunt that means more the blood going through the disease lung the more will be hypoxemia right this is also called oxygen fraction of the circuit so we have to ensure that majority of the blood goes through the ecmo circuit where it can be oxygenated right so how we decides that that depends upon the ecmo blood flow divided by the cardiac output of the patient should be more than equal to 60% right for example if suppose a patient's cardiac output is 6 liter and you are giving a ecmo blood flow of 2 liter what does that mean that means 4 liter is going away from ecmo circuit and that 4 liter is going via the disease lung right and because the lung is disease it cannot oxygenate it so there will be the saturation of overall saturation of oxygen in atrial blood will be decreased it is called hypoxemia this is one of the reason so the simple solution here is to increase what is the solution to increase the ecmo flow right so increase the ecmo flow from 2 liter to 4 liter then the problem will be solved but there is a limit to ecmo flow increase so it has a limit limit to ecmo flow increase so when the cardiac output increases for example when cardiac output increases tremendously for example patient is septic or patient is having high grade fever there is hyperdynamic circulation when the cardiac output increases tremendously patient is restless agitated what will happen now the 60% cannot be maintained because the ecmo blood flow, because the ecmo blood flow is limited and now cardiac output is unlimited it has increased to a larger amount so this evf by cardiac output more than 60 cannot be maintained in this situation what you have to do you have to do measures to decrease cardiac output we can treat the temperature if it is not possible we can induce hypothermia in our patient if patient is septic you can give fluids antibiotics and other things or you can use also use esmolol to decrease the cardiac output right 
so first see whether the patient so when you are dealing with a circuit shunt first see if the patient cardiac output is normal how you see it you can do echocardiography can see it or you can clinically see if the patient is febrile septic tachycardic right if if that is not there then you can simply increase the ecmo blood flow to correct the hypoxemia but if the cardiac output is high even after improving ecmo blood flow also it will not be corrected because the ratio of ebfy cardiac output more than 60 has to maintain right so in that case you have to decrease the cardiac output to maintain the ratio how to decrease it we can treat the temperature aggressively you can induce hypothermia you can for to treat sepsis you can give fluid and antibiotics even you can use a small oil to decrease the heart rate and thereby decreasing the cardiac output so this is one reason and the solution for circuit shunt the another thing will be decrease fio2 in sweep gas so the sweep gas will actually does not affect the oxygenation until or unless the sweep gas is zero the flow is zero however if the fio2 is very low and you are providing the sweep gas and the membrane is functioning well then you can increase the fio2 the simple solution is increase fio2 in the sweep gas but this is not usual so when there is fio2 requirement you have to find out why there is fio2 requirement so this is a temporary solution to hypoxemia if you increase the fio2 the hypoxemia will correct but then you have to find out why this patient suddenly has an fio2 increase fio2 increment right so there can be a variety of causes one cause will be circuit shunt the oxygenated re-injected blood without coming to systemic circulation is withdrawn by venous drainage cannula. So the blood that is oxygenated by the ECMO is supposed to go to the heart. But before going to the heart, if it is taken by the drainage cannula, then it is called recirculation. We are taking the oxygenated blood. So then we have nothing to do with the oxygenated blood. Then the efficiency of the oxygenator will decrease right and the circuit shunt will increase that will produce a hypoxemia in the system right so how to calculate it the formula is percentage circulation is equal to s pre oxygenator oxygenation minus sbo2 divided by s saturation of post oxygenator oxygen level minus spo2 so the formula is saturation of pre oxygenator the formula is pre oxygenator saturation of oxygen minus central venous saturation of oxygen divided by post oxygenator saturation of oxygen minus central venous oxygen into 100 right so so how to calculate the sbo2 the sbo2 is the saturation of central venous blood away from ECMO draining cannula, right? So now by definition the SVO2 should be similar, same or similar to SPO2 because you want the deoxygenated blood, that is the saturation of the central venous blood to get exposed to the oxygenator. So this should be same. If these are same, then percentage, so this value will be zero. If these are same, then percentage circulation or recirculation percentage recirculation is zero there is zero percent recirculation however if there is recirculation then what will happen because you are giving oxygenated blood because you are giving oxygenated blood to the oxygenator the pre and post will be almost same so when the pre and post are same then percentage recirculation 
will be 100%. Right? So these values are equal. So it is 100%. Right? So the simple method. Right? So from where you will take the SBO2? You can take this from left IJV pre and post. So you take one blood sample from the left IJV and two, one from pre-oxygenated and another from saturation of post post oxygenator saturation of oxygen right the pre-oxygenator the post oxygenator and this is the central venous oxygenator and you can put the formulas here then you can find out what is the percentage recirculation ideally roughly the s pre o2 that is the saturation of oxygen in the pre-oxygenator blood or the pre-oxygenated saturation of oxygen should be less than 75% of post-oxygenator saturation of oxygen, right? If it is there, then clinically significant a recirculation is unlikely. Usually, the S pre O2 is on the level of 40 to 60 millimeter of Hg, and S post is around 300 to 500 millimeter of Hg. So you can see the pre and post difference are very high. So when this differences closes, the difference between them they actually approximate each other. Then you find that is clinically. A recirculation is present so we have to take certain measures to decrease the recirculation right so the s right so the as pre o2 should be less than 75 percent of the as post o2 if it is more than that the, then there is recirculation right so how to if there is recirculation how to fix it the simple thing is when recirculation can happen so if the distance between the true cannula the distance between these two cannula is very less that means when the oxygenated blood is being drained here and it is very close to the drainage cannula it will automatically come here right so the distance between them should be more than 15 centimeter so do an x-ray ensure position of cannula right make sure it is the difference between two cannula is more than 15 centimeter right so this this gap should be more than 15 centimeter then there will be less chance of recirculation another thing is if the rpm is very high if the flow is very high so there is a higher negative pressure the speed is very high so as soon as the blood is delivered here it will because the speed is very high it will immediately shut into the drainage cannula so we can what you can do is you can decrease the flow the next thing is after correcting it if there is still recirculation present we can decrease the flow by decreasing the rpm that will create a negative a less negative pressure so so the blood that is delivered will not be immediately sucked in right third we can put another cannula so you can put another cannula which can produce a less negative pressure and less RPM. In that way, we can decrease the recirculation. Or finally, you can use what you call as bicabal double lumen. Here, we, what you do is the bicarbonate double lumen how it act is so this this the chances of recirculation is zero almost zero zero percent chance of recirculation right this is another method so one of the method is circuit shunt it can produce hypoxemia decrease fir2 so when i said when there is decrease fir2 we have to find out why it is there one of the reason will be circuit stunt, another will be recirculation and then another reason can be there that is called 
problem in the native lung. For example, so it's always because the ratio is 60 percent that means it's always 40 percent of the blood is going through the disease lung, right. So if the lung is somehow get affected, for example, there is a collapse and there is a ventilator associated pneumonia, there is a pneumothorax, there is a pleural effusion, right. So all of these conditions can actually produce hypoxemia because 40% of oxygen is still or 40% of 40% of blood is still going through the disease lung. So if there is a problem in the lung, superimposed problem in the lung in addition to ADS that will also aggravate the hypoxemia. So this has to be dealt with accordingly. So the algorithm will go like this so whenever there is a hypoxemia first you have to do two things number one do a chest x-ray in the chest x-ray will find out if there is any immediately reversible condition in our patient like collapse vap pneumor or pleural refusion that you can treat immediately also in the chest x-ray will find out the cannula positions if it is not more than 15 centimeter, then you can reposition it provided we have recirculation. How to calculate recirculation? We have to do three ABGs. One ABG from the left IJV and two are from one from the pre-oxygenator blood, one from the post-oxygenator blood, and you can calculate the percentage recirculation. If recirculation is there in the X-ray, they are very close to each other, the draining cannulas, we can just reposition the cannula, right? So once it is done, then the next step will be if still hypoxemia persists, we have to find out what is the circuit stunt, whether we are providing adequate ECMO blood flow or not, whether the ratio is more than 60% or not. If the cardiac output is very high, how to deal with that, how to decrease the cardiac output so that we can maintain the EBFSU more than 60%. So this will help us in detail how to treat with hypoxemia in a patient who is undergoing ECMO. And regarding carbon dioxide, there is nothing much to do actually. If there is an increase in carbon dioxide, two things we have to do. Either we have to increase the sweep gas flow, that will remove the carbon dioxide, or do X-ray, find out what are the other reasons for the hyperventilation that we have to deal with accordingly, right? So in the next class, we will discuss the other problem that can happen in an ECMO patient. Thank you very much.